So if you were to write the equation of a line, you'd probably say it like this. You'd say y is equal to mx plus b. That's the way that everyone's learned to write equations so far, where we have the slope and the y-intercept, and we can just draw a line. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce three new ways to write the equation of a line in linear algebra. Um, the first one here is called general form, and it has the form like this. It's ax plus by is equal to c. And what this is, is, well, see you have a, we have a y and an x and a couple other numbers and letters in here. So if we just rearrange it to look like this, this is what's going to happen. Let's say y is equal to, let's see, c minus ax, and then we can find both sides by b. We get over b and ax over b. And then if we want to just rearrange this once more, you'll see that y is equal to negative a over b times x uh, plus c over b. And what does this look like? Well, this looks very familiar. Here we have some number times x plus some other number. And up here, we have some number times x plus some other number. So we've just put this, this is just a rearranged form of your traditional way to write a line, an equation of a line. Now let's do an example. Let's just pick some values for a, b, and c. Let's say this is 1. Let's say b is 1. And let's say c is 3. Okay, so we will write it here. We would say that 1 times x plus 1 times y is equal to 3. And when we rearrange for y, we would see that y is equal to 3 minus x. Or if you prefer, we could just say y is equal to negative x plus 3. It's easier for you to visualize it that way. And so let's draw this line. Let's see what it looks like. So our y-intercept is 3, and our slope is negative 1. So we start here and go like that. Right, and then it goes this way too, going up that direction. And this line just keeps going on and on. It has, it has no ends to it. It's forever in both directions. Now we've been talking lots about vectors too so far. So if you think about this, if we knew, if we knew the, the coordinates of a point and then we added the scaled up and scaled down versions of every possible uh, direction vector, if we chose one direction vector, we would get a line. So if we say, if we chose, let's pick a point that's on this line, uh, let's choose here, 0, 3. And if we add a direction vector that is one negative one, we get this. And if we multiply, if we had two times one negative one, we get this. If we had three times one negative one, we get this, and so on and so forth. It just keeps going down. And if we had negative one or negative two times that direction vector, negative three, then you get the point. We're starting to see the same line here. And because we're adding every possible multiple of this direction vector, we get this line extending as far as it can in both directions. So what the formula would look like for this is we'd say well, x is equal to the coordinates of our point plus some scalar times the direction vector that we chose. And if we put a little bit more information into here, we can see that x would be equal to, and we'd write our point like this, we'd have the coordinates point 0.1 and point 0.2 for its, uh, its x and its y component. And then we would add every scaled up and scaled down version of its direction vector which has the components d1 and d2. And in our case, well let's see, we can draw this, we picked our first point here which was 0, 3, so we can write this green line would look like this. In vector form, we picked 0, 3 plus every scaled up and scaled down version of our direction vector which was 1, negative 1. Right, and you can test this. You can say if we picked point zero three and added one times this direction vector, we would get one two. If we if we added three times this direction vector, we would get three zero. So it would just come down to here. And so on and so forth. Every possible point in this line can be described in vector form with this equation.
Now for parametric form, if we separate out the x and the, the, all the x components of this equation and all the y components of the equation, if we put them back together, we can find every point that lies in this line. So if we want to separate out the x and the y of this vector form equation, we would say the x part, the x component of the first point would be p1 plus all the scaled up and scaled down versions of the x component of the direction vector. So plus t times d1. And likewise for the y components of this line, we would take the, the y component or the second component of the point, oh sorry, p2, and add all the scaled up and scaled down versions of the, the second component in the direction vector, which is d2. And so if we want to fill out the values in this, in this equation, we can use the point and the direction vector. So we'll just rewrite it as x is equal to 0 plus some value t that we're about to choose times 1. And its y component was 3 plus whatever value we pick for t times the uh, second component of the direction vector, which is negative 1. So now if we just start picking values for t, let's say we started with t is equal to 0, we would find that the point on the line that we're about to get is that its x component is 0 and its y component is 3, which is what we were getting before. And then that would sit right there. And if we picked t was equal to 1, the x component would be 1, and the y component would be 3 minus 1, it would be 2. So it would sit right there. And if we picked, let's say if we picked 2 and 2 for t, we would find that x component would be 2 and the y component would be 1. We go right there. And say one more if we picked, let's say if t was equal to negative 1, our x component would be negative 1 and our y component would be 4. And if you can see, we're actually getting exactly the same line as we did before. And so there you have it. That's three different ways to write the equation for the exactly the same line.